Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Cigarette imports from Croatia, a new condition for the EU. European Union making good progress towards renewable energy and efficiency targets. And EU OK's border surveillance. And the European Union has abandoned us, Prime Minister of Italy says. Plus, European border surveillance system, Eurosur. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First, from our home page. If Serbia does not approve cigarette imports from Croatia under lower tariffs by the year's end, this request will be included in the framework for membership negotiations, which is being drafted, Tanjung learnt from a source in the European Union. This refers to the annual quota of 1,625 tonnes of cigarettes from the tobacco factory Rovinch, on which a customs tax of only 15% was levied under the CEFTA agreement, which is nearly four times lower than the customs duty on cigarettes from other European states, which is 57%. Serbia's agreement that, by exiting the SEFTA and acceding to the EU, Croatia lost the right to export privileges, and thus cigarettes from Revinch should be taxed according to the same rate that is valid for other member states, has not been met with approval in Brussels, Tangent learned from a senior EU official who preferred to remain anonymous. Well, I bet the Croatians are up in arms. Just days after signing up, they find their laws overturned, and now their export trade takes a hit. European Union member states are showing mixed progress towards three climate and energy targets for 2020, even though the EU as a whole could reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 21% in 2020 with a set of national measures already adopted, according to new European Environment Agency assessments. The assessments consider EU progress in meeting greenhouse gas emission reduction, renewable energy and energy efficiency targets, which were each 20% by 2020. Between 1990 and 2012, the EU reduced emissions by approximately 18%, putting it on track to meet the 20% by 2020 emissions reduction goal. The EU was also on track to meet its renewable energy consumption target. In 2011, renewables contributed 13% of final energy consumption in 2011. Now, no one can deny this is a real positive. I know that here at the unit we have done much to debunk the relationship between carbon and climate change, but that should not be missed interpreted as us being pro-fossil fuels. Renewable and sustainable energy is a vital component in the development for mankind and everyone agrees that fossil fuels simply will not take us into the next century or to a first tier civilization. However, there is a balance to be had and it's vital that we do not throw the baby out with the bathwater. The final hurdle for the European Union to adopt a new border surveillance network was cleared as the European Parliament approved the operating rules for so-called Eurosur communication network. The system could help prevent tragedies such as the October 3rd sinking of a migrant ship off the southern Italian islands of Lampedusa, EU Home Affairs Commissioner Cecilia Malmström said. More than 300 people died in the accident, the worst in recent history. Only by having a pan-European border surveillance system, we can prevent the Mediterranean from becoming a graveyard for refugees trying to cross it in unseaworthy small boats, said Jan Mulder, a Dutch liberal who steered the legislation through the EU Assembly. Eurosur will allow national EU authorities and the bloc's border agency Frontex to share surveillance data from satellites and other monitoring systems. It is set to enter into force on December the 2nd and cover both land and sea borders. Now, this will increase our possibilities to prevent cross-border crimes such as drug trafficking or trafficking in human beings, but also to detect and provide assistance to small migrant boats in distress, Malmström said. So, folks... The state continues to increase its surveillance network and keep tabs on us all. (music) 
Malta and Italy have been abandoned and are facing the migration tragedy alone, a tragedy that is constantly changing and gaining momentum, Prime Minister Josef Muscat said this morning. Addressing the annual general meeting at the Guaxac PL Club, Dr Muscat observed a minute's silence for the victims of the Lampedusa tragedy. The Prime Minister accused the European Union of choosing money over life, saying that money is more important than people. While all European countries, including Malta, reached out and helped in the Greek financial crisis, Malta and Italy are left alone to face this humanitarian crisis, Muscat said, adding that peace in Europe can only happen through peace in the Mediterranean, which will stay out of reach without a clear and concrete strategy. Strong and deliberate words from the Premier as he lays the blame at the door of the EU. However, what is actually happening on the ground? Well, the migrants in Italy are granted an Italian visa, 500 euros, and asked politely to leave Italy and go elsewhere in the EU. So, Mr Muscat, you might want to address that before you throw any more stones and smash all the windows in your glass house. The report begins by remarking on the success of the European Union's Schengen Agreement, which allows citizens the freedom to move across internal borders without checks. Not only does this have self-evident benefits for its citizens, but also for the internal market too. Public opinion repeatedly ranks freedom to travel among the most significant benefits brought about by the European Union. Yet the report states that this should be strengthened through better management of the EU external borders and increased mutual trust between member states. Now the scope of the directive. The report states that it agrees with the inclusion of the pre-frontier area in Eurosur, including border crossing points, airports, but believes that this should be optional for member states. But it also noted that this should be assessed at a later stage with a view to possibly amending the regulation. So that's an option to opt in, in which it's also an option for the EU to later remove the opt-in option in favour of a non-optional mandatory option. Nice filibuster. Today in our video library, we have a public information broadcast by the European Court of Auditors. In this short video, they explain their role in ensuring that the European Union spends your money appropriately. Some examples might be the $54 million given to Rwanda to build roads which will be washed away in the next monsoon. Or the €1 billion Euros given to the Democratic Republic of Congo, which left no audit trail, no evidence of its use. However, government ministers did all receive 800% pay increases during the aid period, but apparently that was not related to EU funding. And of course, there's that little point about the EU not actually having had its accounts signed off by the auditors for the last 17 years. Uh, however, as you'll see in this uh, very short video, because the presenting auditor is on a busy schedule, and suddenly this song has popped into my head. We're busy doing nothing, working the whole day through, trying to find lots of things not to do. We're busy going nowhere, isn't it just a crime? I'd like to be unhappy, but I really don't have the time. I'm... Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit nightly news. I'll see you soon.